So I will pose this as if we were, you know, so people can work through these questions on their own. And I'll frame this workshop by um, saying that I've learned about doing these kind of workshops from being an initiative for indigenous futures research assistant, where they do uh, these seven generation character design workshops, which are, which are specifically for indigenous youth to help see themselves um, seven generations in the future. And I have been recently making workshops um, with, whoa, just jumping ahead. Oh, I know what happens. There's like an autoplay with Alicia Wormsley. Um, and these workshops uh, are called uh, it, Workshops for Black and Indigenous Futurists to Dream. And I have to go backwards to show this. And so we even had a painter there to be able to paint some of um, the people who were at the workshop. And Oh, these stupid slides. Okay, workshop um, number one we had was resting at home and that involved Trisha Hersey from the Nat Ministry and dream herbs and dream visualizations. And this was a way for us to come together with these two communities and try to imagine a future together. And so a lot of what we're talking about today is has been developed a lot through this year and through working with Alicia. And the other workshop I did was with um, Alicia and Lindsay Nixon and Lupe Perez where we were trying to say, okay, we want, we have lots of resources available, lots of mutual aid, but we, um, how do we create a, an almanac or a resource guide so we can now help net people navigate towards the resources that they need and towards the future that we, dream, we dreamed about together. And, uh, and that kind of comes out of the idea of building something ethically. And we have all of these very smart, amazing people who showed up to help guide this. And we were able to come up, this is just one slide of like a bunch where we thought of all, the, all these ideas of things that we wanted and needed in our communities. So, and in that we return to this futuring question where we ask, um, you know, if you're watching this later, take a few minutes and really try to visualize the future where your community needs <clears throat> have been met or are being met. And sometimes it takes us like thousands of years, just, we need thousands of years in the future in order to imagine that as a possibility. Or we can imagine that next year, but sometimes it's uh, good to give yourself a lot of room timeline wise and uh, ground yourself in that future of abundance. I don't know if you have anything to say about that. We were talking about this earlier with each other, and it is this. I've been pr practicing this, um, but I don't know. If, you had some yeah, I mean, it, it really the goal is to just imagine a future in which, as it says, yours and your community needs are being met, which like, honestly, living in America and just the, the ideology that we all have to kind of are born into or prescribed to being here, uh, it's that's so far from our conception, right? It's like a situation in which all of our needs are being met in a way that makes us feel empowered to continue to live and engage with our community and not be facing these sort of typical struggles that we deal with and sort of just the normal sort of stuff that you don't want to have to deal with bills life whatever so when we were talking earlier like the thing that came to mind immediately for me and her is this concept of abundance and just having everything that you need in order to function at your fullest potential and so when thinking about uh, the future and what that that might look like for you, I think that's really a great place to start is like what would be necessary for you to live your life, do your work, do the things that you want to do, benefit the world in the way that you want to benefit it, like what are the circumstances that are would be required for that to be most optimal. And I think that's a good place to start. Yeah, and so some of these questions were developed in these uh, workshops and these these questions that I want to add to this imagining of the future are from Diane Roberts, who is a, a, an amazing artist uh, and thinker. Um, and Diane's questions um, were prompted by a question I had, which is, "What does my what did my 17 year old self need? I needed a lot." And, but in Diane's response to me was the questions: Who am I? What drives me forward, maybe towards the future? What takes me back, maybe in a good way or a bad way? 
what tools do people need to dream? And that tool question is very important. What questions do they need to ask themselves in order to get that dreaming space open? And I, I think very much about, I learned so much from Afrofuturists and that, and that practice set and that skill. And then finally, what do I need for my spirit to stay alive? Um, and then what, where do I find those resources? So how, who am I? What drives me forward? And all of those things kind of add up to an understanding of what they, they sort of answer the question for you of what you would need in order to be thriving in that space and have all of your needs met. So, so part of this question is, is now, do you want to build tech? So we want to, we want technologies to either help us get to the future or, or live in the future, but there is a bigger question. And so when I, we ask people to imagine technologies in the future, imagine the future where we're using AI, um, there's another question, which is what is technology to you? And so to me, technology is philosophies, belief structure, language. Um, but the deeper answer is technologies are as tools, but tools that straddle the reality of being used and being able to communicate with and through. So, so, so technologies can be object or they can be non-object. But right. what is technology to you? Uh, yeah, so my answer for this was slightly different. I, I said that uh, a technology is a technology because it's an invented thing, something that didn't exist before, that enables new methods of communication, expression, or utility. Um, and for the expression bit, it's like enabling expression in a way that was not possible before. And, and therefore, the technology is, is that thing, that link between the impossible and now the newly possible. So, um, so why, so yeah. why, why you hold that, those questions, so you have this future that you're holding in space that you're holding in your brain. You have this idea of technology, however you're defining it. And then right next to there, hold this idea of values. So we want to make tools. We want to make them ethically, but you need to be able to express what your values are in order to get there. So what are my values? What are my community's values? What ethical frameworks do my communities already provide? So my answer was a sweat lodge. Um, uh, working with Tanaka people, I had a really great experience thinking about nets, Hawaiian net building. Um, as so, we, and you want to remember that these values, technology companies uh, tell us they have values, um, but those values are completely unethical. And they like I was just ruminating on Google's value or of uh, how democracy on the web works, which is complete bullshit. I'm not really sure how they can say that still a value of theirs. Well, they have many problematic bullet points They're, in their ethical statement, yeah. but. But that's uh, so, so holding that, so we've got the future and then we've got technologies in those futures. We've got values in those futures. One value I like to sit with is um, uh, reciprocity or gifting giving gifts as, as a value itself. Right. Do you have any value? What's your? Um, I'd say reciprocity as well, but not necessarily with only people, but with the earth and, and our uh, non-human friends. So it's it's th that concept of gift giving, but in, in the way that uh, you're constantly giving back to your environment as much as you're taking from it, or hopefully in, the, in, in that case. So, uh, but again, like the values thing is a huge question. And when, when she originally started talking to me about this workshop, um, you know, like when I think about my ideal future, like a future in which I have everything I need to be my most productive and happiest self and engage with my community in the best way, a million things flash through your mind at that moment. It's not some simple like, oh yeah, if I just had that, that'd be perfect. So uh, it does take a couple minutes, just sit with it and let that sort of stew and, and then just pick a thing, pick one thing that you could see in the future uh, that would enable, at least be one step towards enabling that thing. It doesn't have to be like the, the unifying computer system that solves all of Earth's problems or something. It can, it can be much simpler than that. Yeah, so, um, so, here's, so here's the question that we'll discuss. Um, so imagine a technology you want to see in the future. Uh, and this can be a technology uh, of the future, like tomorrow, like literally tomorrow, the future, um, the future a uh, thousand years from now, or it could be a tool that can help us get to the future. 
And these are the questions around that. Can you read them? Sure. Um, so who uses it? Why do they use it? What is it made of? Where do it, materials come from? And when is your tool being used? Um, and then subsequently, what ethical questions emerge from the use and development of that technology? So, um, do we want to take a? Should I let you three yeah, pause do and think about it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll do sure. it too. Yeah, we'll 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 do it too. If you have a piece of paper, you can even draw this thing, uh, whatever you're imagining. Um, but yeah, just come up with a little story for it and think piece about piece of paper. What is a this, piece of paper? How this object, this technology, is going to fold into that imagined future reality. Okay. We'll shut up. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll mute for a second and
Okay, we are, I think we've come up with our things. Um, and I tried to answer the who, what, where, when, why kind of thing. Um, Joel, <laughs> tell us. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, uh, imagining a future where you need to math. I think the largest issue is uh, in, intersubjectivity and the inability for somebody to quote unquote put themselves in somebody else's shoes. So nice. I propose a, oh, oh, you can't see that as I say, an Umwelt oh, yeah. teleportation machine. Oh, nice. Okay. So um, this is a little globe that you sit in and it transports you um, to another into the seat of perception of another animal at any scale in any language so I this <laughs> over here is an an aerial bacterium this wow. is a deep sea nematode and so you could be any of these <laughs> amazing i i love that wow um yeah. so yeah, let's just go through the, the five W's there. Um, who's who's using this? Why are they using it? I mean, you explain the why, I guess. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, anybody could use it. Anybody, uh, right? Yeah. Great. Yeah. And do you have an idea of what it would be made out of or how that, um, or how it might do what it does? You know, even an imagine. Yeah, yeah, I, I would I, I would imagine some some uh, uh, some blend between a, a bioelectrical, mm, mm. Um, you know, a, a grid that was made out of like action potentials of a neural system that you right you know the literal kind of plugging into the plugging into the experience of something else exactly and, exactly and being able to fully uh, be encapsulated within it yeah no that's so super cool um, I love that. When when is it? Oh, um, no! The, the way we're going, it might be in fifty years. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, do you see any like ethical implications or like problems that might? Um. Yeah. I mean, the the whole idea of deception, right? You know, and uh, not knowing who's in who's in the body at that point. You know, the ghost in the system uh, thing would be totally blown open if this is um, used uh, widely. Um, mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, I mean, even beyond that, being able to experience something from somebody else's perspective or something else's perspective might give a little, uh, you know, might give the person who's experiencing it from, from the machine more of a license to say that they understand that experience more fully than, than maybe they're getting in that window, you know? And so yeah. it could be used as a way to sort of uh, assuage guilt being like, oh, I've been there, I've, I've done that, you know? So I, walked <laughs> I guess in those shoes. Be, I walked in those shoes. Yeah, right? <laughs> Who knows? It's not mansplaining anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, super cool. All right, somebody, somebody else have their... Anybody? I can do mine too. Yeah, do yours. Sure. Um, mine's pretty straight. Let's see. You gotta hold it over your body. Over my body, right? Okay. <laughs> Let's see if I can stand up here. It's just like, it's like oh, I have to show my part face. Of your shirt. There you go. Shirt, yeah. Okay. So it's just like this. Sort. It looks sort of like a nuclear reactor a little bit, but it's just a simplistic concept. Um, I'll describe it. Basically, it's just a waste transmutation device. It takes all of the waste that we're creating in all of its different forms. And then uh, ideally it would be made out of sort of a natural material, something that is, uh, you know, not uh, irreplaceable or, or not replenishable, something sustainable. And then on the inside, I'm imagining some sort of uh, like, like hyper composting situation where you just have this internal system that's leveraging all of the wonders of nature and microbial sort of transmutation of things that we don't want anymore into things that we really need. And hopefully on the other side come out, um, you know, 
things that the planet needs, nutrients for the land, for the soil, things that rebuild these natural technologies that we're constantly destroying. Um, Who uses it? I mean, it's a, it's a device for any community. I could see anybody that's having a problem with excess or waste or anybody who wants, I mean, already we sort of have this. We can, we can start a compost bin in our kitchen or go out in our backyard and throw some, you know, melon rinds on a pile of dirt or something, but uh, just a device that sort of streamlines that and then um, g gives quicker access to the, the wonders of- um, what, what ethical- problems to use. Hmm. See, I feel like having a device to like quickly turn something into nutrients might be overused. You're like, oh, I can, yeah. oh, I can just like make a bunch of waste. It might forgive can... waste. Yeah. Which is n sort of not the point. I guess the, the point would be to evolve past the waste. Yeah. But I guess this would be, and it's like, if we're talking about when, I would love it if we'd have this sort of thing like tomorrow, because we need it now. We don't, we, if we have a thousand mushroom? years to work on our waste problem, then we probably won't need this device anymore. So, Is it made of mushrooms? Uh, yeah, I could see it being made of some sort of advanced- Plastic uh, eating. Pla yeah, <laughs> uh, fungi that'll, that'll turn anything, any dead thing or petroleum product into something that the earth can use and benefit from, so. Cool. Yeah. Somebody else? You're going to go Kavi or you want me to go first? I can go first. Okay, good. First. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'll sh show you mine. Oh, great. Oh, sweet. I see sort of a tree and a big machine plugged into another person. Yeah. So, okay. I'm I'm thinking about the future of AI okay. um, to be um, like a connector um, of everything. So for example, the, the person has some sort of like a, um, I don't know what sort of technology, whether uh, it's maybe um, kind of sharing data, but also building it together. So the, so the cities would uh, add to the kind of this sort of, not database, but maybe like a knowledge or some sort of like, um, I'm thinking about traditions or when cultures passing on um, kind of uh, their wisdom in form of symbols, signs, songs, stories. So I hope that future AI is going to be this kind of grand grandfather, grandmother who uh, stores the information from all of our world. Right. And and sort of connects us back to the future, the future, uh, I mean, uh, connects us to the nature, the nature informs the cities and it kind of becomes like, sort of like a mm -hmm. collective, um, collective creativity. Like it's creative yeah. and it's, it's gentle and it's very kind of like, um, very intelligent, but that's like far, far future. Um, that can understand and respond. Yeah, and, and I'm thinking in terms of um, people like harnessing, they would be on equal level with everything else. So there isn't like, um, um, well, it's probably impossible because somebody might, you know, want to own it or organize yeah. it. But that's my dream that everything is together on the same level. And, and this thing kind of helps to connect every, everything back together. Super cool. I dream of the same thing. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a system that can leverage all available information and understanding and ways of knowing, ways of being into, to consider all of those things at once and be able to allocate resources and, and distribute whatever is necessary, be it information or, or resources to wherever they need to go in order to maintain that balance and create that sort of equal playing field for all all things that are in existence you see that like a thousand years 100 years i'm not sure probably like uh that time maybe the nature will look completely different maybe there will be no trees um but hopefully there will be trees i don't know maybe far far future because um we are not there yet and, uh, and I, that's why I think it's really important that artists work with AI and, you know, like 
kind of have that sort of ability um, kind of say to work with it in a very creative way and um, allow to be built also creative cre creatively mm -hmm. and um, um, I don't know I don't know if it, it could ever happen but if that will be the future I would like to live in such future Mark David you have a Second, oh, my, my, I don't know if you can see this phone if I get in front of the light, or maybe I'll turn the light down. There you go. Okay. Um, so, yeah, what I ended up drawing was something that looks like uh, something out of Fantastic Planet. Um, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> anyway, the uh, it's not the most original idea, but in uh, it's something I think about a lot. It's um, uh, about this kind of like living city, so that you know we're not we're not building these things that are um, uh, fixed and you know, like you say, have no uh, no death cycle. That they're actually you know, and um, and yeah, one of the things that uh, I've been thinking about a lot lately is how we're um, like our relationship between technology and nature mm -hmm. and how, you know, we're, in, we're intrinsically from nature, like we're, we're animals or creatures, but, and then also the technology is um, also part of us. It's an extension mm -hmm. of ourselves, but there's, there's a break because the technology and the nature are not connecting. And so right. the, the technology we're making is kind of in opposition to nature. And so if we could somehow close that loop, you know, and that really just means like fully new paradigms. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So it's like so much of Western ontology has been building that barrier between the human and nature higher and higher and higher and thicker and thicker and thicker in order to, to make us feel as if we are not part of nature. But um urban yeah, yeah. Urban planning to DC. I feel like I've seen so many experiments like you know architectural experiments and city planning dreams and but maybe in a hundred years <laughs> <laughs> yeah that'd be great what do you think um well it it's um it's a process I mean we really have to change the way we produce I mean one of the things is like for the things we use like um, the life cycle does the life cycle match the material mm -hmm. you know or like the use cycle match the material yeah. cycle is what I mean you know and so um, so you know just thinking about things in those terms and what I was going to say is you know that's a, that's what I find challenging like I, I think it's a great you're asking great questions I don't mean to sound like criticism but it's it's also super challenging to mm. think of a device or something that that pushes you in that direction but you can't think um high level all the time right you need to like start somewhere and build something so you know and yeah that, i mean that totally question. that totally brings me to the last slide um which is uh which is on material because uh the so i'll share my my design, I don't know if it's even possible to see. Oh, wait, there it is. There it is. Okay, so they're portals. They're like they're wormholes that are specifically firstly made to be able to have free movement um, in and around cities or places they can't access. And so I have these so, but it's powered by um, an ancient philosophy technology um, called Capemni, which are twisting vortexes, which um, are is the theory of how when we do pro our protocol rituals on the ground, in the sky, in the in another world, there are people mirroring exactly what we're doing, and then and then like it, and then it's like a portal that crosses, and so we could unlock that technology and enact. It's already a technology and it already works, but making it work for <laughs> Making it work for uh, bison to be able to uh, repopulate uh, North America because that's basically North, what we see as North, nature in North America is complete environmental collapse, um, where there were like, billions of animals before. There is not 
the, and then that those population collapses lead to what we have now, which is soil collapse. So um, we so so these these portals are my questions were like who's using it? Well, animals use it first um, to repopulate areas, uh, and it's like a super to me in my brain. I was like, oh, super te tech technology. It's we're using things discovered in, in CERN and like. Uh, we're using nuclear energy and um, really intense things. And um, my questions was, were like, okay, can we use biocomputing to do this? Uh, is it a fair trade to like mine the things in order to make these tools in order to repopulate um, different areas? Like who would, who would get access to this first? And then I was like, okay, what's powering it? Because that's one of the big materiality things that gets ignored is like, where, where does our power come from? We often ignore the bodies of water that are dammed in order to power things. So I was like, okay, one, one thing that I like about Lakota culture is we understand bison and like, and we used to have to start fires with uh, bison craft, you know, you know, that is the sun itself. It's considered the, the sun grows the grass, the bison eat it, and then the bison are like the represented, representatives of the sun. So I was trying to think of ways that nuclear power, sun power, solar power can be connected with material power. Um, but yeah, that's my that's my thing. So my last prompt is to is to think about um, like a single real material in your tech idea and uh, and pick that and then and then look that up. I mean not right now, but you know think about like where does it really come from? So I, I, last time I did a workshop like this, I had a titanium piece. And so I was able to actually identify the mine that probably produced that piece of titanium. Uh, so in mine, I can say where I can figure out where do we get our nuclear materials? For, like let's say CERN does some of this research, where do they get their nuclear materials? And I think I can actually find that out. Um, and so that's kind of, what I want to leave you with is that um, to remind that all 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 these technologies are possible. Like we could actually sit around and figure out how to make all these things that we just talked about for real right now. Yeah. Which is what was so exciting about doing a workshop like this is most things that people come up with are actually possible. Maybe they're not completely like closed the loop ethical at the moment, but they are possible. So um, I, I, did a re I did a workshop once and somebody came up with like a plant monitoring body interface device. Mm -hmm. And I, I could think of all the materials that we needed and we could have assembled it, you know, in, a, in about a week. Yeah. A AI is possible. I'm trying, your thing yeah, is possible. Yeah, my thing, yeah, right. On a small scale for sure, you just you size it up. Uh, and Joel, like, it, it's funny, we were just doing the Sundance project and there was a team of people that are doing a project called symbiosis, which is exactly what you were describing, which is uh, a series of VR and mixed media interactions where, which includes all sorts of wild things, including like putting on suits and, and wearing VR goggles and all sorts of stuff. But it, it's meant to put you, you in the position of something like a microorganism or a bug or a non-living thing. And, um, and it forces your body to, also be involved in that process. It's not just a visual stimulation, yeah. stimulation or something. And the like. AI thing is possible, hopefully possible very soon. I mean, that's what I, I don't know. I thought you, did you have me to say? Yeah, I wanted to respond to your uh, future model. Um, there is actually a really cool place uh, in Toronto, in Don Valley. Um, they've been doing this uh, project to um, like, uh, I don't know what's exactly the name, but they've been trying to revive the Don Valley, like the nature. And um, what I've kind of seen, and I think it's kind of very magical, is that they've actually created a space uh, where uh, it's like a bird sanctuary. And um, for, I think, last two years, they've been creating this like a special terrain for birds to perch for like kind of like um, closed off area. And like, because I go, they walk all the time. Like I've seen how actually it's been changing and now it's finally finished. And like uh, this summer, there were so many birds and it was like, I feel like these kind of portals, they are definitely possible, but 
in terms of that we need to create this nature for the and then the wildlife returns right and mm -hmm. the reason why the wildlife disappears because we have you know like changed the environment so if you kind of have a lot of bison in the place where they not very good for their habitat i don't think they would be very happy but i think what we should really do is like uh, bring back these environments and uh, and then they will return themselves right um so um because i feel like there's a lot of also power in people's hands not so much technology because um you know like it's kind of it's really going back to the basics and um kind of looking back what did we did wrong and then fixing it more than kind of creating more problems or complexity yeah yeah oh, okay. certainly now <laughs> having forgotten so much of what we've learned in the past yeah so i just want to conclude leave that question in the air about about material um and yeah go go do a google of one of the <laughs> materials and, and see if you can find out where it probably yeah. comes from and I also thought this idea that all four or five of our ideas um, could actually be like one place, which I thought was interesting. Um, they were all like not the same or over, they were all like could overlap. Um, and then finally, just finish by saying that, um, you know, the we talked about, you know, applying indigenous ethics, cultural ethics, um, cultural values, they're generated from, from context and that's like land, ontologies, cosmologies, mythologies, epistemologies, the, the way we know things, how we come to know things. And these are like real places, real beings, um, the materials to build tools come from other real places and real things. And they come with real consequences when we ignore those relationships. So, so yeah, that's our workshop, I hope. <laughs> That was interesting. Yeah. I hope someone watches this later. So all you in the future. Yeah. Email us. Share with the idea. Tell us yeah. what we made. Let us know. <laughs>